Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Bold and the Beautiful kills off Luna Nozawa in Shocking Showdown. The Bold and the Beautiful has an epic showdown lined up next week on the CBS soap, and fans won't want to miss a moment of the action. Time is winding down for Steffi Forrester, Jacqueline Mifsinswood, but someone will make it to her rescue in the nick of time. However, not everyone involved will survive. Keep reading for more B&B &B spoilers, here's what's happening next week. Luna Nozawa, Lisa Yamada, has been buying time with her hostage Steffi Forrester until the apartment building where she is holding her captive is demolished. In Luna's eyes, it's the perfect crime and another clever way to get away with murder. After taking out Tom Starr, Clint Howard, and Hollis on Bold and the Beautiful, she's had some hands-on experience. The Bold and the Beautiful spoilers, Finn Finnegan and Bill Spencer to the rescue. According to B&B &B spoilers, the Calvary is on the way. Dr. John Finnegan, Tanner Novlin, will find Steffi's phone at the Forrester Mansion and most likely question Bill Spencer, Don Diamond, about his wife's whereabouts. Bill already knows there's something seriously wrong with Luna Nozawa, and he will most likely put two and two together and realize his ex-daughter is responsible. Figuring out Luna Nozawa is involved in Steffi's kidnapping is really only half the battle. Dr. Finn and Bill Spencer need to figure out where Luna is keeping Steffi Forrester hostage and get there before the demolition of the apartment building begins. But who will make sure Luna gets out B and B spoilers? Luna Nawaza dies in demolition? Bold and the beautiful rumors hint a showdown will occur at Poppy Nozawa's, Romy Parks, apartment during Steffi Forrester's rescue. There's a good chance Luna could be knocked out by Steffi or Finn and left in the building seconds before the demolition begins. If the writers take that route, they could never recover Luna's body and leave an opening for her to return and wreak more havoc down the road. The corridors of Forrester creations buzzed with the usual energy, but there was an underlying tension that hadn't been felt in months. Luna Nozawa, the enigmatic and fiercely independent designer who had quickly risen through the ranks, had been at the center of more than just fashion drama lately. Her presence had unsettled more than a few of the foresters, especially after she discovered secrets that some would kill to keep buried. Luna had come to Los Angeles to start fresh, to leave behind the shadows of her past in Tokyo. But the City of Angels had its own darkness, and Luna found herself entangled in a web of deceit that threatened not just her career, but her very life. The more she dug into the mystery surrounding Poppy's strange behavior, the more she realized that she had stumbled upon something far more sinister. It all started innocuously enough, a misplaced file, a cryptic conversation overheard in the halls, and the sense that Poppy was hiding something. But Luna's investigative nature wouldn't let it go. She was determined to find out the truth, even if it meant confronting Poppy directly. Luma had no idea that her curiosity would lead to her untimely demise. The day started like any other. Luna arrived at Forrester Creations early, her mind focused on the new collection she was spearheading. But the unease from the night before lingered, a gnawing feeling that something was terribly wrong. She had gone to Poppy's apartment under the guise of discussing work, but what she found there was anything but professional. The small, cluttered apartment had a foreboding atmosphere, as if it were a place where secrets went to die. Luna had found a hidden compartment in Poppy's closet, filled with documents that painted a very different picture of the woman everyone thought they knew. It wasn't just about business. Poppy was involved in something dark, something dangerous. Luna knew she should have gone straight to the authorities, but she needed more evidence. She spent the night gathering information, her heart racing with the thrill of the chase, but by morning that thrill had turned to dread. Someone had been watching her. When Luna arrived at work, she was met with the cold, steely gaze of Ridge Forrester. He was usually so charming, but today there was something off about him. He pulled her aside, his voice low and laced with menace. I know what you've been up to, Luna, Ridge said, his eyes narrowing. You're digging into things that don't concern you. I'm warning you, drop it before you get hurt. But Luna wasn't one to be intimidated, not by anyone. I don't know what you're talking about, Ridge, she replied, her voice steady, though her heart was pounding in her chest. But if there's something going on here, something that could hurt the people I care about, I'm not going to just stand by and do nothing. 
Ridge's jaw tightened, and for a moment, Luna thought she saw a flash of something in his eyes, fear, maybe even guilt. But before she could say anything more, he turned and walked away, leaving her with more questions than answers. The rest of the day passed in a blur. Luna tried to focus on her work, but the sense of impending doom hung over her like a dark cloud. She couldn't shake the feeling that she was being watched, that every move she made was being scrutinized. As the sun began to set, Luna decided to confront Poppy one last time. She needed answers, and she wasn't going to get them by playing it safe. She made her way to Poppy's office, the halls eerily quiet as the rest of the staff had gone home for the night. Poppy was there, sitting behind her desk, a look of surprise on her face when Luna walked in. Luna, what are you doing here so late? She asked, her tone too casual to be genuine. I know what you've been up to, Poppy, Luna said, cutting straight to the chase. I found the documents, the ones you've been hiding. I don't know what game you're playing, but it ends tonight. Poppy's expression hardened, and for a moment, Luna thought she saw a flicker of fear in her eyes. But then Poppy stood up, her demeanor shifting from defensive to predatory. You shouldn't have gone digging where you don't belong, Luna, she said, her voice cold. You have no idea what you've gotten yourself into. Luna felt a chill run down her spine, but she stood her ground. I'm not afraid of you, Poppy. I'm going to the authorities with what I found. You can't keep hiding behind your lies forever. Poppy's lips curled into a sinister smile. You think you're so smart, don't you? But you're not the first person to try and take me down, and you won't be the last. Before Luna could react, Poppy lunged at her, a flash of metal glinting in her hand. Luna barely had time to register the knife before it was slashing through the air, aimed straight at her heart. She dodged the first strike, but the second caught her off guard, the blade slicing into her side. Luna gasped, the pain searing through her body as she stumbled back, clutching her wound. But she wasn't about to go down without a fight. She grabbed a heavy paperweight from Poppy's desk and swung it with all her might, striking Poppy across the head. Poppy staggered back, blood trickling down her forehead, but she didn't fall. Instead, she let out a low, maniacal laugh. You really think you can stop me, Luna? You're just a little girl playing a game you don't understand. Luna's vision was starting to blur, the blood loss making her dizzy, but she forced herself to stay upright, to keep fighting. She backed toward the door, hoping to make a run for it, but Poppy was faster. She grabbed Luna by the hair and yanked her back, throwing her against the wall with a sickening thud. Luna's strength was fading, but she couldn't give up. She had to stop Poppy, had to expose her for the monster she was. With one last surge of energy, Luna kicked out, catching Poppy in the stomach. Poppy doubled over, giving Luna the opening she needed to scramble for the door. But just as she reached for the handle, Poppy was on her again, the knife plunging into Luna's back. Luna cried out, the pain overwhelming, as she fell to the floor. She could feel her life slipping away, the darkness closing in. As Luna lay there, her vision fading, she heard Poppy's voice one last time, cold and devoid of any humanity. I warned you, Luna. Now it's over. Luna's last thought was of the people she loved, the ones she would never see again. She had fought bravely, but in the end, the darkness had won. The next morning, Forrester Creations was in chaos. Luna's body had been found in Poppy's office, the grisly scene sending shockwaves through the entire company. Poppy was nowhere to be found, having disappeared into the night like a ghost. But Luna's death would not be in vain. The secrets she had uncovered would eventually come to light, and Poppy's reign of terror would come to an end. But for now, the world had lost a bright, shining star, a woman who had been taken too soon in a city where the price of truth was often paid in blood.